DC The Voice, Alabama Prison Profiles. What's going on with y'all, man? Make sure y'all like, subscribe, share, comment, donate to the Cash App and PayPal if you're feeling generous. Just to update y'all, life has just gotten too damn real in the past 30 days. That's all I'm about to say about the hiatus, but I appreciate everybody that reached out and check on the kid and the platform, right? Now, picking up where I left off with the information compiled in conjuncture, uh, incorporating new stuff and newly developed stuff, right? Once again, man, come on the show, come on the show, come on the show, and that's all I'm saying in the comments if you're dropping your resume, man. Get at me. Now, today's content, once again, is from the mystery newsletter floating around. I had sent an email out to the email associated trying to get, you know, subscribed to receive this, but they hadn't gotten back to me yet and I heard. So if you, anybody's associated with that and you see this video, tell them folks to get at me, right? Here we go. The Dark Side of Corrections, Gang Affiliated Guards in Alabama's Prisons. The Alabama Department of Corrections has long been under scrutiny for its my raid problems, ranging from overcrowding to understaffing. However, a more insidious issue lurks within its walls, the presence of gang-affiliated correctional officers. These officers, rather than upholding justice and rehabilitation, perpetuate a cycle of violence, intimidation, and corruption that severely impacts the lives of incarcerated citizens. Bullying, intimidation, and harassment. Incarcerated individuals in Alabama's prisons face not only the inherent challenges of confinement, but also the constant threat posed by gang-affiliated correctional officers. Reports from inmates and human rights organizations detail harrowing accounts of bullying and intimidation. Correctional officers with gang ties often leverage their positions to exert control over inmates, fostering an environment of fear and violence. These officers can manipulate prison dynamics, often turning a blind eye to or even facilitating gang activities within the prison. Harassment is rampant. Inmates who refuse to comply with the demands of these corrupt officers or who attempt to expose their misconduct are frequently subject to severe reprisals. This can range from physical beatings to psychological torment, such as prolonged periods in solitary confinement or the deliberate withholding of necessities. The power imbalance between inmates and guards already significant and becomes a tool of oppression and exploitation under these conditions. Corrupt money flow. The intersection of gang affiliation and correctional oversight creates fertile ground for corruption. Money flows illicitly through the prison system with corrupt officers acting as intermediate, oh shit, intermediaries in a black market that includes drugs, contraband, and even paid protection services. In some cases, correctional officers themselves engage in smuggling contraband into the prison, receiving substantial kickbacks from gang leaders in return. This corrupt economy not only undermines the rule of law within the prison, but also perpetuates the criminal enterprise outside its walls. Funds generated through these illegal activities often funnel back into gang operations in the community, exacerbating broader social issues related to gang violence and crime. The impact on rehabilitation and recidivism. The presence of gang-affiliated correctional officers fundamentally undermines the rehabilitative goals of the correctional system. Inmates subjected to constant fear and harassment have little opportunity to engage in educational or vocational programs that would aid their reintegration into society. Instead, the toxic environment fosters resentment and perpetuates criminal behaviors, increasing the likelihood of recidivism upon release. Widespread Investigation and reforms. In response to mounting evidence and public outcry, a widespread investigation into the criminal activities of the Alabama Department of Corrections officers and administration is underway. This investigation aims to dismantle the entrenched corruption and restore integrity to Alabama's prison system. Early findings suggest that the problem is both systematic and pervasive, requiring comprehensive reforms. Efforts to reduce the criminal enterprise within the Alabama Department of Corrections involve several key strategies. Number one, increase oversight and accountability. Establishing independent oversight bodies to monitor the actions of correctional officers and the administration. Number two, enhance screening and training. Implementing rigorous background checks and ongoing training for correctional officers to prevent gang infiltration and promote ethical conduct. Number three, Inmate protection programs. 
developing programs to protect inmates who report misconduct, ensuring their safety and reducing retaliation. Number four, technological interventions. Utilizing technology such as body cameras and enhanced surveillance to deter and document illegal activities within the prisons. The investigation and subsequent reforms are crucial not only for the well-being of incarcerated individuals, but also for the broader goal of criminal justice reform in Alabama. Addressing the corruption within the Alabama Department of Corrections is a necessary step toward creating a fairer, more effective correctional system that prioritizes rehabilitation and the rule of law. And in conclusion, the issue of gang-affiliated officers, how do you eat an elephant? In Alabama's prison shines a stark light on the urgent need for reform within the state's correctional system. The negative impacts of this corruption are profound, affecting the lives of inmates and undermining the goals of justice and rehabilitation. As the investigation unfolds, it is imperative state authorities and the public remain vigilant advocating for meaningful changes that will break the cycle of violence and corruption within the Alabama Department of Corrections. There y'all go, man. That's going to do it for that one, man. Like I said, this is the last piece of whoop I had collected that I was going to do the next video on before life got real once again. So y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comments, man. Got some pretty good points in there, man. I know just every facility doesn't just have like you know half the guards are gang banging or something like that it's probably at the most you know what i'm saying one per facility if that maybe i don't know i don't feel like it's that shit <clears throat> but they're saying this is a huge problem pretty much you know i'm saying this is i'm pretty sure it's like written with the influence of prisoners because it's just too well written you know what i'm saying but y'all let me know what y'all think about this in the comment section man DC The Voice, Alabama Prisoner Profiles, at the gate.